Welcome to Dajovnik. Now, ceasefire. Harris says it. White House says it. Hamas says no. Bibi laughs at the idea because he doesn't know how he could ever think Israel will be safe. The guy I'm about to bring in now, Mossab Hassan Youssef. He says it is too late, the discussion that we're having, that this can only get worse. Why, my friend? Hi, Chris. Thank you for having me. It is good well, the to thing have is you. The... Um, go ahead, explain. Yes, what I meant by too late is the United Nation coming late now after having the evidence some four months ago. We've been saying this. The Israeli mission to the United Nations provide evidence since the beginning of, the, of this war about rape uh, cases, and the United Nations choose uh, to close their eyes and hush the, uh, uh, the situation. Uh, the United Nations has, have failed to condemn Hamas because we are not dealing only with a hostage situation. Israel is not fighting in Gaza only to free the hostages. Israel is fighting for its very existence, which is basically Hamas is posing an existential threat against right. the state of Israel. Understood. Uh, as I said earlier, um, Mossab just came back from the region. We have photos of him, and he went in deep. He went in deep uh, into Gaza to see what is happening, and you came back with a very sober understanding that you think this situation can only get worse in terms of spreading around the region. What did you see that made you feel this way? Look, Hamas turned every sacred place, every building, into a shooting pad. And now the IDF has to deal with every building as a suspect building a shooting could come from everywhere, and the civilians are left with no safe zone or refuge. Uh, when Hamas used hospitals, schools, mosques, every public place, and turned them into uh, war zones, now where do the uh, uh, public, where do the civilians go? They have no place to go. And from day one, I said, evacuate the civilians with coordination with Egypt, build safe zones on the side of the Egyptian border, just temporarily, until the war is over. Because Israel is determined to eradicate Hamas, and I think there is no way around it. But Hamas is using the Gazan civilians as human shields. This is their uh, tactic. and. We have to take this card uh, away from Hamas. If we are able to safely uh, let the most vulnerable civilians pass into a safe zone in Egypt, just temporarily, I'm saying, until the war is over, Hamas does not have leverage. Hamas would lose their tactical advantage. And when they don't have civilians as human shields, it will be much easier to deal with them, instead of having to have this uh, high number of civilian casualty. Um, Egypt says no. Uh, the counter is Israel could stop bombing and stop performing operations, and then the civilians have a better chance to get out. Uh, why isn't that the starting point? Well, this is another word saying to uh, bow to Hamas, to surrender to Hamas after they committed a genocide on October 7, and let Hamas go unpunished. What, what logic is, is this? Then Egypt has not only moral responsibility, Egypt is responsible because the Muslim Brotherhood ideology came from Egypt. You know, before the Muslim Brotherhood, the pa Palestinian people were in much better shape. So basically, Egypt 
need to take responsibility. In wars, there are no such a thing as political borders. You know, when there is a humanitarian crisis like this, a terrorist mm -hmm. savage group hijacked an entire society and using children as human shields. In this case, the political border does not exist. You should let the people out, let them go to a refuge so those uh, monsters don't have any advantage in this war. And what about if, you, if we don't, the firing, if, if we don't, well, okay, this is not realistic because bombing. what? But hold on a second. Well, I this understand is Hamas that it's demand. not realistic. The, I understand. I understand that it's not realistic because Israel has no basis for a sense of security because Hamas has basically promised it's going to attack as soon as it can. I understand. But and this is a little bit, you know, this is a, this is a little bit of a dilemma, right? In that if you don't stop, you can't build, you can't get the people out. There are too many to move. Uh, there's nowhere to go that is built. So, you know, you, you have to have a build a place and you have to get them there. That can't happen under the bombing. So how do you make this not an impossible situation? And then you say to me, I'm looking at it too small that this is going to go all over the region. Yes. Well, we are less than a week uh, from the holy month of Ramadan. And Hamas is yes. waiting to escalate during this, this month because it's the month of jihad, basically, where, you know, many Muslims, uh, devoted Muslims, uh, are looking uh, towards Gaza. And this is going to ignite a hellfire uh, where the, Hamas is counting on the Muslim anger worldwide to turn the people against Israel and against the Jewish people. They are planning on creating global chaos during the month of Ramadan. And what Hamas is aiming for is to sacrifice the entire population of Rafah. Because Sinwar is not only, he sees that his death is near. So he is not willing to fall on his sword and surrender. He wants to sink the entire boat. His now risking the entire population of Rafah. We have to take this advantage from him. And by the way, it is possible because there is no bombing at the Egyptian-Israeli uh, or uh, the egyptian Gazan border. So we can definitely mm -hmm. create a safe passage. And it has to be coordinated with Israel to make sure that only vulnerable civilians women, children, elders only allowed to go into those safe zones, not the uh, uh, Hamas fighters, and especially not to smuggle uh, the hostages out of the Gaza Strip. So it is possible to create a safe passage and get the civilians out. Otherwise, Hamas is planning on the blood bath during the holy month of Ramadan, and we have to be they are preparing for a massacre. We have to understand their logic. They are using people as human shields. We could have done this five months ago. We could have done this from the beginning of the war to strip Hamas from their advantage and let the civilians out of the fighting zone. Thanks for watching. Drop a comment below. Don't forget to like, share, and hit subscribe to stay updated with our latest content. Until next time, stay informed and inspired. This is Dajobnik signing off.